Hello everyone and welcome to another mod showcase. This is quite possibly the biggest mod we've ever covered, which might sound surprising to a few of you because we've covered Stardew Valley Expanded. And this mod, while in the same vein as that, is a lot larger. So I think I'm going to go ahead and throw a notice at the beginning of this. This is not a mod for anyone who's already overwhelmed by what Stardew Valley has to offer. This is a huge expansion, gives you a ton of stuff to do, but it can be overwhelming. That being said, with how big this mod is, it requires a lot of framework mods. On the left side of the screen, you're going to see all the required mods to run this. And on the right side, you're going to see the optional mods recommended by the creator of the mod. On top of all that, I get a lot of questions saying, can you add mods into files that you've already started? The answer is yes. This is a file that's four years in and I'm just starting the mod now. So you'll see what effects that kind of has. It's a little weird. This is a mod that's intended to be experienced from day one, but you'll see the differences. Let's get started. So immediately, this is a scene that would play normally if you were on day one of a normal farm, kind of introducing you to the mod a bit. Sheesh, Lenny, not too loud now. What if someone heard you? They might find out about me and... Chill, Lulu, no one cares. Anyway, I gotta go. Still got lots of paperwork left. Real nice of you to saddle me with all that, by the way. Stop calling me that. And it's your own fault for procrastinating all the time. No can do, Lulu. It's my ride as your big sister. So immediately we're getting introduced to the big sister of Lewis, which I think is a nice touch. A nice connection to have with familiarity. Anyway, gotta go. Gotta catch the cable car before it fills up. Take care now. That's right, I'm listening. What are you gonna do about it? Rob! Uh, nice seeing you. So how much of that did you hear? Ugh, Lenny. That was Lenny, my older sister. She came by to give me Ridgeside Village's financial report from last year. Ridgeside Village? Oh, your grandpa never told you. There are neighbors in the mountains to the west. You can use the cable car to head up there if you'd like to visit. That cable car is a marvel of engineering. Who knows how they paid for it? I did hear that someone in the village has close ties to the governor. Anyway, do go visit when you have a time. A part of their tourism a part of their tourism revenue goes to Pelican Town, you know. I will do. I better get back to town. Goodbye now, Rob. So, after that, Ridgeside Village, huh? I should go visit sometime soon. We're gonna get a couple more scenes. These are scenes that you would not see if you were playing from day one, because just like with Stardew Valley itself, there's a couple of things that are added when you hit, for example, year one. That's what this scene is actually introducing to us. Once you hit the beginning of year one, this character named Naomi joins the village. So there are a couple of things that evolve with time, just like in the regular Stardew Valley village. But we're going to skip that for now. I'll let you experience that on your own if you choose to do so. And unfortunately, in this game, uh, scenes run backwards. So this is actually a character that would be, actually two characters that would be introduced in your first summer. I want to say summer of day eight. Uh, summer day eight. But yeah, again, we'll, I'll let you explore that. Also, some of the villagers actually do come down to the normal Stardew Valley village. Such as Corin, who is actually romanceable. You can tell by the eight hearts. This job is calm and all, but I do wish I could go around town every once in a while for a break. That's exactly what you're doing. And this is Lorenzo. Not romanceable. He's a bit older. My wife put in a few new orders for the fresh supplies. I'm really glad to have her as my partner. Well, that's just a little bit of an inkling of a... Oh, more. Okay, hello. Carmen. Not romanceable. Today should be a good day for fishing. Normally, I'd go through these mods knowing absolutely everything about it, but, uh... There's a lot to this, and there's a lot that I'm not going to know to cover, so just know that there's a lot to explore. Also, I love this cable car cutscene. Let me just smack it with a hammer real quick. I love it because it reminds me of Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire when you go up to the top of the volcano. Very cute. Love it a lot. It's also very cute. I'm, I'm happy that I chose a day that had petals flying around. Here's an NPC. There's a kiwi fruit in front of you. They do take a lot of liberties 
when it comes to this. Shoo! You might have noticed that that's actually a Junimo. That is actually a giftable NPC. Not roommateable or anything like that, but giftable. What was that? Was that a Junimo? What was it doing here? Of course, you gotta do a little work to try and find him around town. Uh, just if you're curious, the NPC Maps mod does work with this, so don't worry about that. You'll have a... <laughs> this actually is almost required, I'd say, because there's so many NPCs. Uh, 26 giftable NPCs. And I want to say in terms of ones that are romanceable, there's 14 more. So yeah, there's a good amount. And of course, if you ever want to look at the map, there's this little add-on here on the left. And this is the map of Ridgeside Village. We're gonna do a little tour of the town, though. Conveniently, we do have this house right here, though. Hello. My little invention exploded last night. I should ask Maru for some help. I do like that they mention uh, some of the other characters. He is romanceable, Kenneth. He, I guess he's a bit of a counterpart to Maru. Very inventiony, very sciency. If we were to go downwards, uh, you know what? Let's take a quick trip downwards because there's a couple of things that I do want to show off. Namely, the forgeables that you can find here. In fact, here's some. Mountain Arugula. The forgeables around here actually give just straight up buffs. So this is a plus one luck buff. So if you really want to get some early game buffs to your stats, this is the place to do it. There's a flower up here I believe is a foraging buff. Yeah, plus one foraging. I'm going to head back up though and head into town the normal way. I am going to make an effort to try and show you pretty much everything I can without getting too spoilery with things. This is Sunny, another character you can gift. Have you met young Mr. Amethine? He can be quite difficult, but he, but don't take his words too seriously. He's a child after all. Young Mr. Amethine. Yeah, there's like six kids. So this is a scene that you would see when fall starts. This is actually her putting up the special orders board, which you might remember is in Stardew Valley. It was added in 1.4. Again, we'll skip it because it's not what you would normally see on day one. This is the scene that you would see on day one. Hello there. Hello there, Rob. Was the cable? How was the cable car ride? Welcome to Ridgeside Village, a village on the side of the ridge. The slogan is a work in progress. I guess you've finally read the letter he gave you. I'm the one and only Lenny. Please hold your applause until after the tour. I'm the chief administrative officer of Richside. It's a complicated way to say she who does the paperwork. Yeah, she's the mayor. We don't get a lot of villagers from outside the valley, so we're really happy to see you. Yeah, they all know we're the new farmer, just like normal. It's been a while since anyone lived in that crusty old cottage in Lazuli Farm. It was owned by a good friend of mine, so I hope you'll take good care of it. Good friend indeed. One thing I believe is act that's actually added here is uh, your grandma lived here, which is normally, you know, never mentioned, but obviously she existed because someone had to give birth to your parents. Let me show you around town with a quick tour. Buckle up, buckaroo. I'm not sure how exactly to come across all the information for your grandma, but it's there. First, we have the Log Cabin Hotel. It's a great place to relax after a long hike through the mountains. It has a private balcony for events and even a gym on the third floor if you're still not worn out after your hike. Interesting, I might have to check that out to see if it has any practical use. I will say there's a lot of things about this mod that have changed over the years as well. So if you haven't done anything on it for like a year or so, some things might be changed. There's a lot more custom sprites like trees and potted plants and stuff. This right here is the town square. It's the beating heart of the village. Folks like to hang around here and, and socialize with other townspeople, weather permitting. So that's a sign that you'll find a lot of characters around here. Up these stairs is where the magic happens. That's my office. It's made of wood, bricks, and paperwork. I occasionally vi visit Lewis regarding municipal duties or, you know, just to tease him for taking himself too seriously. It's my Yoba given right as his sister. And of course we can always, you know, encourage a little bit of Lewis bullying. You love to see it. Here's the restaurant of town. I can't wait to show you all of these cooking recipes, they're wild. Smell that? That's Pika's, the primary hub for Ridgeside cuisine. I like the dishes he serves, and I love the atmosphere. 
Don't even get me started on the view. Don't look down, though. If you do, don't blame me when you start feeling nauseous. Can do. And here's a little stage. This is actually where uh, some of the festivals happen. Also, hey, look who it is. Feast your eyes on the Starbound stage. Robin and Clint helped us build the stage for gatherings and activities. It hasn't seen much use lately. It's a shame to tell you the truth. Local morale hasn't been all that great recently either. There's rumors going around about dangerous fruits and spooky ghosts. I can assure you those are nothing but rumors. The only dangerous fruit is a pumpkin during Spirit's Eve. Fruit? I mean, I, you know what? Botanically, I guess so. Cuisinely, though. No. There are several other farmers living in the village. Derek's farm, the Blooming Hill Farm, is located to the northwest. He must be made of mushrooms because he's a fun guy. Get it? Ugh. But seriously, he sells useful farming products. We also have Nightingale Orchard in the southwest, managed by the Lydens and their niece, Elisa. Elisa is a sweet young lady with a wonderful voice. She lacks the confidence to perform, unfortunately. Perhaps someone special could help her find herself. There's a hint pushing you towards, you know, getting to be friends with someone. That concludes the grand tour. I wish you a warm welcome to the Valley, Rob, and an even warmer welcome to Ridgeside Village. I can't wait to show you everything here. It's really cool. Oh, yeah. Yet another scene that you wouldn't normally see for a while, but we'll skip it. It gives a little bit of characterization, but we can find it on ourselves. I'm assuming this is a map. Oh, I wonder if this is built in even without the NPC mods uh, thing. I believe this actually shows where everyone lives. Interesting. I like that. Anya Zhang, Faye's residence and clothing shop. Clothing shop. Oh, that's right. I got to show that. Uh, for those of you who have a lot of money to throw around, you're going to really like this. Also, did I just spot Lewis's purple shorts? Doubt I can go in here. Not good enough friends with Ian or Sean. Okay. Sean with the stanky spelling, of course. Gotta love that. Uh, one thing that I do want to show out with the log cabin place. I'm just going to keep hitting things with hammers. Don't worry about it. You can buy a room here if you want to go to sleep here instead of go back to your farm. Maybe you have something to do in the morning. I don't know. There you go. Just an option if you really want to just immerse yourself in Ridside Valley, I suppose. Ridside Village. Oops. There's another cutscene that, again, normally you wouldn't see for a while. Or maybe you would. I'm not actually sure about this one. Hi, Rob. Beautiful day, huh? Is everyone already knows you, so I'm assuming this would be, like, sometime late spring or summer or something like that. Anyway, this does introduce an NPC that you can gift things to, though. But I'll, I'll show you that myself. We'll go crazy. Okay, I'm going to switch off of that. We'll, we'll have this out. Maddie, who is romanceable. Today's the only day that I'm free. Maddie is such a redhead name. Like, gotta say, they nailed that. Here's the hospital. A collection of folders. I don't think that was what I wanted to click on. Oh, I guess you can refill your stamina and health if you like to. Here's Shiro. Is romanceable. Kind of a hottie lamati, if I do say so myself. Mom filled us in on why Dad never can't, didn't come back with her. I'm going to call him and tell him she arrived safely. That's right. Uh, his mom's the one that comes back. Uh in summer day eight that i was talking about here's that special order board day one doesn't really show anything but you also do have the normal quests board which uh olga is mad at me but now i know how to make her happy i need some honey for my honey bunny and who's that for that's for bert i don't know a bert but maybe we'll find him and here's the office nothing special here i believe well i'll just fill that with water don't worry about it can't wait to chat with Naomi about her travels. Yeah, everyone's talking about Naomi. Again, if you were like on day one, I'm assuming you would get a lot of more introductory words from everyone. Here's Floor. Uh, I think she's the one that they were talking about that has a great voice but is shy before. She is romanceable. Love the red hair. You can. I love that you can just like look at so many things. It's so nice. Even if it doesn't matter at all. Anyway, uh, can I access this even though you're there? Here we go. Okay, I want to go over all of these recipes that are added in. So I will say, this game has added pretty much a little bit of everything. Uh, there's new enemies, new recipes, new fish, new pretty much if you can name it. It's new and it's there. And I want to say this one on the right is for actually buying some of the food. 
And of course you have spaghetti and fish tacos. Cool. A lot of really cool like new effects to have with food, which you know, I think the game could actually use in vanilla. Here's some of the kids. They added in like eight of them. He's holding his breath, doing that little challenge. And Trini, I have a new auntie and uncle. I, I think she's referring to the two people who came back during summer. <laughs> Sheesh. My mom's been bugging me to never to get a newer bucket for my bait. Oh, you must be a bit of a fisher. She's not romanceable, surprisingly. Keeps on grabbing mine and they end up slipping in her hands. Yikes. This is the guy I wanted to find. Today's a perfect day to grab a nice cold Joja Cola and read random encyclopedia articles. Let me just grab my Joja Cola here. What the heck? Did I make you mad or something? Fantastic. Sean is romanceable, of course. Now there is a turtle here. You can't really see him, but he's here. Torts, who is giftable. Uh, I don't know what he would, maybe dandelions? No, he doesn't like that. Just know that the turtle can be gifted things. Is this, I think this is actually the boutique here. Uh, maybe? This is a drawing of abstract drawings for the dress. Uh, maybe it's not open right now. Food looks tasty. Shouldn't take a bite though. Yeah, you probably shouldn't. Paper full of uh, different contact numbers is taped to the phone. Yeah, this is the boutique, but she doesn't seem to be home. She's a bit of a haughty totty girl, if I remember correct. And then we have the rich family over here. It's mine cards don't work, by the way. Um, just a rich family in an absolutely huge building. I love that they utilize a lot of the decorations that you don't normally find around either. Guess this is a sauna of sorts. Can I get, go in? Actually, no, <laughs> you hate to see it. Looks like I could have inspected it. Who are you? Hold on, get back here. Tom Kasoop, you love to see it. What's up? Irene, Mr. Sunny uses this time to pray to Yoba. I find his dedication to the spirits fascinating. It's something new. All right, Coolio, got all these plants in here. Hello, Araya, not romanceable. I think that's a child, can't tell. There's no such thing as a rest day for us. We have a lot of responsibilities to ourselves in this town. Yeah, they probably paid for everything. Maeve. She's a bit of a, a stinker. Can't you see I'm on the phone? Where are your manners? And she'll just keep saying that. You know, there might be some way to restore these carts. I'm not really sure, but that would be a little bit down the line. And that's a good time to mention that uh, this game actually does have a story to it. Here's Isabel. She is someone who is romanceable. Favorite day of the week. Sunday is my me day. A time to relieve some stress and catch up on my meditation. A bit of a girl's girl, I think. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and take a nap while I explain this to you. This town has a story to it. There's a series of missions that you can take that unlock new areas and uh, new just additional everythings, kind of. And there's actually one character that only becomes marryable after you complete the entire story, and I kind of want to find him tomorrow if I can. Go ahead and take a nappy poo so I don't have to relive all of these experiences. Our room's at the bottom left most part of the floor. I believe it's always this bottom left room, just because it is. Sometimes you'll find other characters actually spending the night here too, even though they have a house literally in town. Good stuff, it's the next day. Yeah, see, what are you doing here? I don't think I can go in his room. You're not friends enough with Philip. I don't know, maybe he lives there. Maybe it's like the workers here live here. I Listen, I don't know. Over here on the left, we do have a farm. Again, it's nice to see them use a lot of the stuff that like isn't utilized anywhere else in the game. Crops for decoration, coops for decoration, the chickens come out, it's so lovely. Hey there, Rob, need something? No, if it's for your farm, I probably sell it. They do have a little shop in here. Unfortunately, it is still closed. I'll have to come back later. But uh, you know what? I think I'll just wait for them to go, go through. While we're waiting, actually, I think I should be able to fish in this river. And there's a couple of new fish, so let's see if we can catch any of them. <laughs> yeah, already. Mountain red-bellied dace. In addition to there being just additional normal fish, there's actually three legendary fish that were added. 
How do you get him? Yeah, there's probably hints around the game that tell you where to find him. He's gone in. I believe he's tending to the store. Yes, I just want to show this off real quick. So this store sells just kind of normal things. Uh, although I don't know if they'd actually sell garlic seeds in year one. I'm not sure about that. Couldn't tell you. These seeds are basically slightly discounted. Normally parsnips would be 20 coins. They're 14 here. Cauliflower, I want to say, would be 75, 56 here. But you can only buy six a day. And it changes according to the season. So go there if you have a specific crop that you want and don't mind the extra walk and want to spend a little bit less money on it. So what do you have on store? I guess just the normal stuff. Actually, Deluxe Speed Grow just outright being sold. All right, I'm gonna explore the forest now because it's not just a village, it's not just NPCs. There's monsters, there's missions, there's cool stuff. Mysterious man seems to be marking a map. Hmm. I see the late farmer's grandchild has arrived to the valley. The spirits greet you, farmer. I am but a nameless traveler, but you may refer to me as Geo. You can see the true shape of my ears? Well, that's certainly a surprise. Usually the seer's magic hides my true form to humans. That's right, this man's an elf. And he's also the character that I said you can't marry until you beat the story of this village, which makes it very interesting to me, and I'd probably marry him if I were doing a full playthrough but I doubt people will believe you anyway. He's so intri- like, I, the mysteries here. Interesting. Nothing. If you'll excuse me, I have to go. And he gone. What was that about? And here's another area to fish. I think I will do a quick little fishy real quick. Hey, there's a new one, Ridgeside Bass. Actually, that's uh, used for that really good, um, that really good fishing recipe, I remember. Also, here's an area that we can't go yet. Again, missions, unlock areas. There's a place up here that, of course, you can't go until you have the steel axe. Although I don't, maybe you could put a chair here, I don't know. Maybe it's skippable just like the regular one. This is the area I'm really interested in. Also, I love these tree textures. Brave of you to wander beyond the ridge. The barrier created by the mountain spirits ends here. Wandering further presents danger. Consider this a warning. What danger? Hmm, you ignorant fool. Beautiful. Got him. They're a bit sturdier than I remember. This place holds secrets. Since you'll be risking your life to wander around here, I would rather not miss the opportunity to know more about this place. In exchange for the information you give me, I'll grant you a valuable item for some spiritual essence. Come see me at my cabin at your, if you're interested and alive. So this is uh, this expansion's way of not allowing you to buy your way through every upgrade and everything. There's a new currency, just kind of like Ginger Island had cinder shards and taro roots and all that. There's a new kind of currency that you can find here only by knocking out enemies here in the forest. And if I could get a few to spawn, that'd actually be pretty cool. There's one. Here's some more arugula. I want to kill you. Obviously I'm using, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, oh goodness, there's that spiritual essence. Uh, but these are actually used for completing some of the story missions. Not the spiritual essence, but the inked fossil and the silver fish bones. Also, golden pumpkin. Do I get iridium of that? No. <laughs> Just curious, you know, since I do have that profession that makes all forged items iridium. There you are. So th check out this enemy. Also, did I just get nauseated? That looked like a nausea, nausea blast. This guy takes so many hits and he's kind of a reskin of a pepper rex. And he drops two of these special items, the golden skull coral and the entombed ring, both of which are required for the story stuff again. There's a fun system in this game where you can bless some of these items that we've been given and they turn into different items. 
and each of these different monsters have an item that they fear. And if you go to bed holding that blessed item that they fear, they won't spawn the next day, which I think is a really cool system. Anyway, I'm getting close to being spanked pretty dang well, so I think I'm gonna head out. Ooh, hello. There's those characters. I actually wanna talk to them real quick. I didn't think I'd be able to find them there. Also, natural mahogany trees, I think. Nice. I... I can walk through, right? Yeah, okay. I can sense them. <laughs> the exclamation point. Sense what? Kiwi has mission today. Don't follow, Kiwi. Uh, would you like a fish, my good man? Kiwi like this. <gasps> he would! Oh, that's so great. And would you like this flower? I wonder if I can't actually give him anything until after the story missions. Interesting. Anyway, uh, I think I'm gonna end it there. Like I said, I haven't even come close to showing you everything. I mean, look at all this. But... Oh god, and a cutscene? Oh lord, you know what? No. You want to know what it is? You play the game yourself. Uh, thank you for watching. In the interest of keeping this from being way too long, I think I'll cut it there. Thank you for watching. Tell me if there's anything in specific that you would like to see later on. And goodbye.